In this question, we are given a parabola, and they've given us its equation, and an exponential graph, and we also have its equation. Now the first one says, write down the equation of the asymptote of g. Now the asymptote of any graph that does have an asymptote is always shown by this part over here. So what that part tells us is that this graph has moved four units down. So this asymptote, which is not very clear, would have the equation y equals to negative four. And so that is our answer. Then for 6.2, it says write down the coordinates of d. Now that's the turning point. So did you know that this is the turning point form of a parabola? Let me just write that out for us. I wanna show you guys something quite interesting. A normal parabola, like the most easy parabola that you can get, which you might have seen in grade 9 and 10, starts there. That is what a normal parabola does. It starts at 0, 0. Then this negative flips it upside down. This moves it up by 25 places. And then this one, remember that x minus 3 moves it 3 places to the right. And so that is how they're getting that type of graph. So what it tells us then is that this coordinate would be 3, because it's moved 3 places to the right, and 25, because it's moved 25 places up. What I like to normally do for range is I, I know that range is in the vertical direction. So I put a little star at the top, and I put a little star somewhere at the bottom. And I'm going to start somewhere on the graph. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to see how... Can I go from one star to the other? So here I'm at this star, so I can maybe start here. And I'm going to try to get to this star. Let's see how far I get. Let's follow the graph. Oh, no, I'm not getting to the star. Look here, it's turning, it's turning, it's turning. And now it's going back down. So I have no problem getting to this star, or I mean to that level. That level can keep going. But I do not have a way to reach the star because my graph is stopping over there. So what I can say is that the y values can be anything underneath this point of here, anything underneath that. So I can say then that the y values can be anything that is smaller than or equal to 25, because remember the y value here was 25. If you prefer interval notation, you can say that y is an element of 25 down to negative infinity. Notice that I'm using a square bracket because it includes that value. It actually touches that value. And over here I'm saying smaller than, but also equal to. All right, question 6.4, calculate the length of EB. So EB is from here to here. So all that we would need to do is to get the y-intercept at E and the y-intercept at B. So to get a y-intercept, so to find the y-intercept of E, I would take the graph of F, which is this one. Let me just write it down. And I would make y equal to, I mean x equal to 0, sorry. So I'd say y equals to negative, and then I'll make x 0, because x is 0 there. And that's going to give us an, an answer of 16. So we can fill this in as 0 and 16. And then I need to find the y-intercept at b, so I take its equation. And I make x equal to 0, and so that's going to go like this. And that's going to give negative 3. You can fill that in as 0, negative 3. And so clearly, if this distance is 16 and this distance is 3, then we can just say um, that that will be 16 plus 3. And so the final answer there would be 19 units. 6.5 says, determine the values of x for which f is decreasing. So the way that you analyze a decreasing or increasing question is you look from the left-hand side to the right hand side. You must go from left to right. So we're going to go in this direction. And I want you to imagine that we have a roller coaster. So here's a roller coaster with wheels. Okay, so the roller coaster is doing this. Now, where is the roller coaster going uphill? Well, that would be this area. Where is the roller coaster going downhill? Well, that would be this area. So decreasing means going downhill. So downhill would be from this point onwards. But now they want you to use the x values. So the x value at d is 3. 
So it will be when x is anything greater than 3. So we can say x is greater than 3. We're not going to include 3 because at the 3 it's not decreasing, it's flat. Um, if you prefer to use interval notation, then you would say x is an element from 3 up to infinity. 6.6 .6 speaks about the average gradient. Now guys, let me explain something to you. You know in grade 9 and 10 we used to work out the gradient of a straight line and we used this formula. When they say average gradient, it is exactly the same formula that, they are, that you're going to use. The only reason they're using the word average is because it's not a straight line, it's a curve. But it's, you can think of it as the same. All right, so calculate the average gradient between A and B. So where's A? Okay, A is here and B is here. So we need the coordinates of A. We already have the coordinates of B. So to find the coordinates at A, you need to realize that that is the x-intercept of the parabola, but it's also the x-intercept of the exponential. So you can choose any one of those. I don't know about you, but I prefer to work with, I think for this one, I'm going to prefer to work with the parabola. Okay, and I think most students like to do that. But if you don't, you can go with the exponential. It'll also work out. And so what we should know about point A is that its x value, I mean its y value, is 0. So I say 0 is equal to this. I'm then going to multiply everything out. There are other ways of doing this, but this is what most students prefer. And so they leave, the, leave the minus out for now. And then you get x squared minus 6x plus 9 then put the negative in, and then I'm going to take, well let's first simplify, so that's minus x squared, and then I would get rid of the negative, so I'll take everything to the left hand side, and then I can factorize this one, so this one will factorize nicely as x minus 8, x plus 2, you might have to pause and just make sure that you get that as well, and so x is equal to 8 or x is equal to minus 2, so what that means is that there are two x-intercepts for that graph. And that makes sense. There's one here and there's one here. Now the one at C, that's obviously the 8 and the 0, and the one at A is the one that we are actually looking for and that's minus 2 and 0. But now we're not done. We have to work out the average gradient. So the, remember that the average gradient is, whoops, why am I saying y? m equals to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we're doing it between A and B. So the coordinates are minus 2 and 0, and the other coordinate is 0 and minus 3. So I'm just going to say 0 minus minus 3 over minus 2 minus 0, and that's going to give us a value of negative 3 over 2. Or you could say negative 1.5. So it's negative 1.5 is the answer for that one. In question 6.7, they say that graph t is obtained by reflecting g, which is the exponential, in the x-axis. So when you reflect something in an x-axis, let's say you have this point here. If this is minus 3 and minus 2, then if you reflect it in the x-axis, it goes this way. So what happens if you have a graph such as g, for example, which is doing this, then when you reflect it, this point will go here and this point will go up at the top. And so you're rather going to have something like that. Okay, and the asymptote will reflect as well. So let's say this is the original asymptote. Let me do that in a different color actually. So let's say this is your original asymptote. Then when you reflect this, as we said, this point well, let's first reflect the asymptote. This will end up going here. This point will end up going here, and this point would end up going over here. And so your graph would now do something like that. And so now all of a sudden, if this is y equals to positive 4, then your range, remember your range is your y values, is going to go um, from positive 4 all the way down to infinity. So your answer would say that y is smaller than 4, but if you prefer interval notation, you can say y is an element from 4 down to negative infinity. And so that will be 6.7's answer. And then 6.8, if p is equal to f plus 2, write down the coordinates of the turning points. This is quite an easy one. They're saying that p is the same as f, but then they want you to plus 2. So this will move the graph up. So the turning point of D 
is currently 3 and 25. Now it's just going to become 3 and 27. 3 and 27. Now, guys, you're going to have to pay careful attention because this is a difficult one. But if you understand it, or if I can help you to understand it, you'll see it's quite easy. So if they do this for another test or another exam that you write, you should have a much better idea. So pay careful attention and promise me that if you don't get it the first time, keep watching this until you get it. Okay, so here we go. A tangent is a line that only touches in one place. So it would probably look something like this. It's something like that. Um, why am I doing it that way and not that way? Well, they said that the gradient is positive 2. See, it says they're 2x. So I know that it's going to be something like this. But the point is, is that it only touches once. Okay, so a tangent touches once. Right, because I mean, for example, if I have a line that does that, that is not a tangent. Because there you are cutting twice. Okay, so forget about that for now. If I asked you, if I gave you this equation for the straight line down here, and I said, where does that straight line cut the graph of f? If I said, where does it hit the graph of f, or where does it intercept the graph of f? Think about this quickly. What would you have done? You would have made the two equations equal, right? And so we're still going to do that now. We're still going to make them equal. So we're going to take the um, f of x graph, let me just write it down, and then the g of x, sorry, it's not g of x, it's just called y, so y equals to 2x plus k. You're going to make those two equal to each other for now, and then what you're going to do is you're just going to simplify this as much as you can. So I'm going to uh, put these two brackets here, leave the minus on the outside. And then I say plus 25 equals to 2x plus k. Leave the minus, multiply the two brackets together first. And then put the minus in. And then just simplify this thing. Just pretend that k is a number. And so I'm going to take everything to the right-hand side. OK, you see what I've done there? I've just taken everything to the right. I'm then going to put all the like terms together, so the x squared. The x's will become minus 4. And then I'm going to put the numbers together. So 9 minus 25 is minus 16. And then I'm going to say plus k. OK, guys, are you ready for this next part? Can you remember a few term, maybe a few months ago or a few weeks ago, you would have done something in school called the nature of roots. Remember that? Now, for a quick little summary, we always used to look for nature of roots. We always used to look at b squared minus 4ac. If b squared minus 4ac was equal to a negative number, then that was called a no solution. If b squared minus 4ac was equal to anything positive, like 5 or 9, then we always had two unequal roots. You might have to go watch some nature of root videos, guys. But, but two unequal roots. Can you remember how did we have equal roots. Can you remember that? What did the what did the discriminant or the triangle have to equal so that your roots are equal? Well, well done if you can remember that it's when it's equal to zero. Remember that? When b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, then the roots are equal. So we say roots are equal. What that looks like on a graph, for example, was like this. See, you only have, technically, you only have one answer. There's only one. There's not two like we normally find. Okay? So there's only one. And if you are confused, guys, as I said, go learn your nature of roots. So now think about this. You are trying to find out where is it that this tangent, or because it's a tangent, it only touches once. So we only want one answer and not two. 
So what we now do is we take this expression and we find the b squared minus 4ac and we're going to make it equal to 0. If you're feeling a bit overwhelmed about this, it's okay, guys. It's only four marks. I know that's a lot, but seriously, like if, 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 if you have to leave that in the test or if you have to get two out of four, it's okay. But, but maybe try to understand it. Maybe watch this again. Go watch some Nature of Roots um, and, and, and just try improve a little bit. Okay, so let's try get b squared minus 4ac. So b is minus 4. So that's minus 4 squared minus 4. Now a is 1 and c is all of this. c is whatever's left at the end without any x's. Right, now we said that that should be equal to 0. So we make it equal to 0 and then it's just going to become 16 minus 4 and then I'm just going to, that's minus 16 plus k and then 16 plus uh, 64 minus 4k. And so if I solve for k, I'm going to take it this side, and then that's equal to 80, and so k is 20. So that's quite tricky. So my challenge for you is watch that one a few times. Go do your nature of roots. Do not move forward until you understand it. That is how you build confidence, and that is how you get better in maths. All right, guys, so that's it for this question. Thank you very much.